Okay, so for this, we're going to be designing a system, um, local delivery, like GoPuff. Uh, I'm guessing this feels like it's like Uber Eats, but like basically you can have um, some kind of like items. They're going to be deliverable within some kind of time range. And, um, you know, people can see the, the, the items and then customers are going to be able to order, you know, multiple types of items and all of that and, um, non-functional, right? Like we want this to be like fast. Um, we do want this to be strongly consistent. So there is like, we never want to go negative, honestly, or something that runs out, right? Um, because this would be bad if two people, you know, try to order something and they don't exist. Um, and then we need to be able to support um, high volume, so just scalability and then strong consistency and then keep it pretty available, right? I uh, This is like pretty simple. I think this is this ties into like design Uber. So maybe that's what I would title this as a video um, would be design Uber or not Uber, Uber Eats, sorry. Design like Uber Eats or Instacart. I don't know why they chose GoPuff for this because it feels like it's not going to be like that. But anyways, I think that's fine. You call this a lot of different things. Uber Eats. Home Depot rentals, warehouse fulfillment, and then like restaurant aggregator. I like that. Okay, let's go ahead and get into designing this. Um, so we've got this marked as easy and I'm gonna kind of just go over my thoughts on it. Um, and so when it comes down to like Uber Eats, things like that, customers are gonna be able to query the availability of items deliverable in one hour by location. Customers can order multiple items at a time. It looks like they're able to like take in from multiple different types of DCs also, like distri distribution centers, and then just wanna be able to just order stuff. And in this case, I think we're gonna start with this like an easy one, I guess. I mean, design a local delivery service like GoPuff, which is honestly, this is just like, I mean, it's local delivery. So it's like Uber Eats or Rappi, Instacart. Um, I think Walmart, Walmart probably offers something like this. Amazon also probably offers something like this because it's, you know, just delivery. Uh, I think it's called Amazon Prime Plus or something. So for every system design interview, there's only going to be a certain amount of things they're going to ask you. Um, so there's going to be like an out of scope and there's going to be stuff that's in scope. Um, payment processing is generally always out of scope unless it's a payment processing problem. But for this problem, like again, you only have 30 minutes to an hour to kind of code these things out. And so you can assume like certain things are just out of scope that you're just not going to do uh, like directions, or maybe like analytics uh, directions for the person or for a driver, things like this, I think are fine, but then just like user can place an order nearby and then a uh, user can see orders and inventory, you know, nearby. I think this is basically it. So the customer should be able to alter multiple order items at the same time. I think this is fine. Um, and so they can place an order and then like user can your place can get multiple items. All right. So we, this is the functional requirements. This is just super easy. Um, we don't have to do anything else really. And I think this is what makes the problem easier is that we don't have to do a whole lot here. It's just like these three things. So now let's go into the non-functional requirements. Go ahead and delete this in the same vein. There's going to be stuff out of scope that we don't want to do. And so in terms of the non-functional, we're going to be seeing uh, the uh, uh, one obvious thing is that like, because this is an inventory system, um, we don't want people ever taking like two things from inventory at the same time. That's just a problem that comes up. So we do want strong consistency um, around when, like when um, buying like items, when two users buy items, we want to make sure that that never happens, that that situation never happens. And then um, we do want the website to work. Right. So like high availability. And then of course we're going to want, I don't know what actually, what else, um, there's some other stuff here too. Maybe you could talk about like uh, write heavy, read heavy. Um, in this case, I would say the system is going to be read heavy. Most people are probably going to look at items more than they actually choose one specific spot to buy it. And so we're going to be displaying a lot of stuff, a lot of data, um, as opposed to people buying it. Um, and then I think like in, in terms of this thing that I'm kind of modeling this after this is high scalability because, um, just the way that they wanted to design it to a high scalability, which means we're going to get a lot of requests. But like, I would say this is like a read heavy system for sure. And so this is all we need really for a non-functional. Um, and there's always like out of scope stuff for non-functional too, that you can also mention to your interviewer or think about, which is uh, security and, you know, maybe privacy of data, things like that. So let's go over here. Um, so we do get privacy and security and we get disaster recovery. Now that we're there, we've, we've done these two. Um, now there's back of envelope estimations, which I believe are maybe listed here. 10,000 um, like distribution centers, DCs, and 100,000 items. But that doesn't really tell us about scalability. But we're also going to have the back of envelope estimations and go over this. So let's go over these numbers. Um, so 10,000 DCs, 100,000 items. 
they can choose from. It was more like um, an Amazon warehouse. So this honestly should probably be like design Amazon or something like design Amazon warehouse or something. I should probably name it that. Okay, so we're gonna have 10,000 distribution centers, 10,000 items. Each distribution center is gonna have an item. Um, another thing I care about though is the scale. So like how many users are ordering items every day? How many users are going to be um, checking the website every day? And I don't know off the top of my head for GoPuff. Um, see if he gives us numbers here. He does not. Okay, cool. Um, we're gonna come back to this. We'll come back. But then instead, I do want to mention the entities for this, which are going to be like, obviously, we're going to have an item and uh, we'll, we'll have like a distribution center, distribution center, whatever. I think you should always say it first and then like do something like this. Anyways, so we got the DC and I think DC can have an item, you know, has items inside and then items can have like quantities, things like that. Um, And then we'll have like a user. We'll have the, what else we're going to have? The, what else? Uh, user distribution center. Let's look here actually. Um, in order actually, I think it makes sense because they can place orders. So it has orders and I think that's fine. I think that's fine. I like it. I like it. I like it. So let's go see what this one was. Um, so we have an item an inventory a distribution center, which I did write out. And then we have an order and we have an order item. I don't know why we need to order item. Maybe that's for the user. I don't know actually. Oh, also there's a difference between item and inventory. That's weird. I don't know why they did that. Inventory is the physical instance. Yeah, I mean, this, is, this doesn't make sense. This is weird. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of interesting though that, because I would have thought you could just have the quantity and the item, um, unless you want to make it searchable, uh, I guess, if you want to have types of items. I thought you could just put a quantity there. Feels weird, I don't know, to do it that way. Oh, uh, but this is something I have to think about too though. It's like, why did he do that that way? I guess this is the thing that gets displayed that they can order. And then this is how much it has, how much each distribution center has. What are we doing here? Dopa, also high, high. We are going over system design, going over how to design like a Amazon kind of like distribution center, I guess it should be called really. Like design like a GoPuff or like Amazon Prime delivery, which is that they're gonna be listed items. That probably makes sense. That's probably why. It's like that is because like the catalog, the actual catalog that person's going to see is like the items. And then each distribution center is going to have like their own. I think I understand because this won't let you know, because if they only have the items, then it won't let you know it. So you'd have to make another one. Yeah, I understand. So we'll have like uh like it maybe has item. Hmm. But that's weird because then we end up with a mini to mini relationship for the database design. I'm not too great with the designing the databases. So I'm trying to like really, really understand this and how this is working so I can improve on it. Hmm. I also spent a lot of time on this, but I, it's important for me to learn this. Inventory. Well, some of the inventory to develop the specific quantity. Like, I don't know if it should be item inventory. All right. Does he go over the system to uh, the actual things? No, he doesn't. Okay. So we'll go with the API routes because Facebook loves talking API routes. Let's define this API and actually make this a bit smaller. And I think so. One is we want to display it. So it'd be like V1 display items. Um, this one's going to be passing in. Honestly, these should be like categories too. So you could like pass in like what category it is. Want to pass in the uh, get request um, and then actually placing the order. And then this will be like a, have, it'll have like a params in the body where they can pass in like the orders that they want. And I think that's it. Display the items and then they can select them. Um, maybe like post v1 slash add item or add to cart. And so we can pass in the item, add it to the cart, you know, item whatever it'll probably just be the item id honestly and i think this is it when it comes to it it's just you're going to be adding to the cart you're going to be displaying the item and then you're just going to actually make the order for the person um if it has like availability and then uh actually we want to also display like a specific item so we do want to display the actual item maybe it's like a item id and that'll get the, the actual quantity of the item and the name I think that's it for the API routes. So availability, latitude, longitude, keyword, page size. Oh my God. Even says like what it returns. So instead what this does is it places the location. I was thinking this is Amazon. Um, so maybe I actually don't even need to do this, but on Amazon's website, you don't have to do that. But on this one, I guess GoPuff, you need to know what is the radius um, surrounding the person. And you can only show the things that are in that the items that are in that radius. Um, it doesn't actually go over the, the benchmarks for the system, which kind of sucks, but Whatever, I guess. Customer should be able to query the availability of items. Okay, anyways. So, okay, well, we have this set up, so I'm just going to go ahead and code this. Okay, let's build out this uh, design Amazon Prime delivery. Div 3 are about the same, too. Yeah, I want to do Div 3 or Div 4 for sure. 
for sure, for sure. But uh, yeah, it's it's just not going to be like a priority though, as we don't see the slight difference in diff three and diff four same difficulty. Interesting. They shouldn't be. Definitely should not be. Okay, so what we're going to have is a user. They're going to say, hey, I want to see some kind of thing, right? Let's build out the load balancer, of course. Let's build out the service here, call it inventory service. Then we're going to pass in the database here, um, which is like inventory DB. The inventory database is going to have these objects inside. So it's going to have items, um, item inventories, distribution centers, um, orders, and all of that. There was an educational. I lost so much time on C because I tried some weird binary lifting stuff I didn't need to. Yeah. It's pretty crazy that like even at your level, like it's kind of it's like the same problem that you come up with. It's also something I don't do too much. User goes to inventory service. It's my main problem probably. Yeah, it's interesting that the problems don't like the problems are still affecting like at that high level. I, I talked a little bit um earlier about how like the idea of um uh basically like there, there's a moment where like LeBron James, like son, is having his first like NBA game, and like LeBron basically just gives him like super basic advice that like you know that like it's just like oh like you know just play your like play your best like basically like don't worry like don't play any differently like just do what you've always been doing, but like this is at like world class like you know level right, and so it's it's kind of like it's interesting how like the same kind of advice the same problems kind of arise um that you still have to like focus on. So the user wants to look at the inventory, right? It's going to go to the inventory service. The inventory is just going to grab the, the DB and it's going to pass it back to the user. And then um, when they want to actually place the order, we're going to have a like orders database, I suppose. So what we can do is we don't even need an orders database. We could probably just have like an orders table. So like an inventory table, orders, like table. But then we can just create the order. So when somebody wants to create the order, then we go to the inventory um, service. We'll pick up that item and then we'll mark the item. Uh, for them. Um, it'll be stored on the client side, I think. And then we can just like pass in all that data when they're actually ready to make the purchase, create the order, create how much money they're owed, and then just kind of work with it. I think this is like, like, I don't know, I think this kind of makes sense. One is I kind of messed up because I mean, I'm, I'm kind of just free balling this, honestly, but I would imagine that like this works. Like the hard part is this is just the SQL database design, which isn't that hard, honestly, but it's this idea of like, okay, we need to run some kind of math calculation to see like how much of the items are in stock. So we need to iterate through, we either iterate through all of them or every time somebody takes an item, we like remove it, remove like the total item, the total quantity of like an item, like item, it'll have like a type, a name, you know, like ID and like a quantity. But we basically just remove the quantity every time like somebody makes an order, remove five. And because this is a relational database, uh, it'll stay strongly consistent. If we do, um, we can set the transaction level and then distribution center, distribution center table where we're going to be having a distribution center table where we're going to have a ID, of course, um, inventory ID because it can have the inventory and then the inventory ID. We're going to know how much is here. Uh, let's see here, An ID, maybe latitude, no, not latitude, longitude. How does the inventory table know? I think it's a mini to mini. So I think it's like inventory, like two item table or something. Like I think you need to do this so you can have inventory ID and item ID. Weird though, because these are different. So I think this is like probably the idea is that we just want to also with this relationship store the quantity that is there in that inventory for that specific item ID. So now the inventory kind of has it linked so that inventory can now have all of it. Then when somebody wants to get the items for some specific category for some kind of sorting, whatever we can pass it into the get parameters and then we can pass it in, uh, to here, check the DB, go through all the items, display them, return like all the item objects in like a JSON format and then display specific items if they click on one and then add it to their cart. Um, I don't know if we need a request for adding it to the cart. Actually, this is wrong. We can do this purely on the client side wrong with that on the client side and then on the server side when they order it will create an order and then decrement quantity of it maybe based on their location so it'll be like some kind of like math a geom geometric that is uh, set out here so i think this is fine i think this works use a sql database relational and set it up in a structure like this and i think that works um i think it also scales up to uh you know the amount of users that they would have although he doesn't specifically mention it um let's talk about like these these follow-up questions that you could be asked, which is customers should be able to query the availability of items. So this is the idea that like that this is the display page I mentioned, which is like, okay, which is just structuring the table properly. I think now in this GoPuff, it's a little bit different because he wants, 
but you can only order things near you. So that's what you need to place into the parameter of your table, which is where is it located at and only get the ones that are nearby. I believe Redis allows geolocation, Postgres also allows geolocation. Um, so you can store actual coordinates inside of it and uh, do things with that. So my guess would be that he's probably doing something here with that. Um, or I guess you just have a nearby service. So you can find all the ones that are sorted, I guess. Okay. This is like my inventory service that I set up, but walks here, but then now you need to talk to nearby service beforehand. Uh, customer should be able to order items. So again, we can just use Postgres. It's, you can use SQL. That's fine. They just put it all together. And we get some deep dives here. Um, make availability lookups, incorporate traffic and drive time. So some bonuses. If we want drive time. I think we have to connect to some kind of API, honestly. Um, maybe like something like Google Maps or something. I don't know, but like use some kind of API to tell how long it's going to take. Time travel estimation service against the nearby. So then like every five minutes we do a query to that API. That's just what I would imagine is time travel services doing. I, I think there's also things like, um, I mean, you need location data because traffic changes a lot. There should be some kind of API that gives you some approximation of location data. And then uh, availability of lookups, fast and scalable. This is fine. I think indexing your SQL database will help you. 10 million orders a day. So he finally does give us the, the numbers. 10 million orders a day, that's into the power of six. This is 10 to the power of five, so it would just be 10 to the power of one, right? Um, or sorry, actually 10 to the power of seven written for the million versus 10 to the power of five. Uh, so that's two, 10 to the power of two. And he's saying that they're doing 10 pages searching, I guess. So you boost it up a little bit more. 10 pages across a search before purchasing an item. And then 5% of users will end up buying. That seems accurate. Query inventory through cache, Postgres read replicas and partitioning for 20,000 queries a second, yeah. So you could use leader follower as a pattern, have read replicas to handle the reading load because we're gonna be mostly redoing reads. And then in terms of writes, we're fine. Or you can also use a cache like Redis. Um, so that is how you design Amazon's delivery service with a little modification too of um, of GoPuff. Um, but like this is primary, primarily done for um, Amazon Prime delivery, so. Anyways, that is it. That'll be that. So good luck, guys, with your system design stuff. I'm going to be here later again, kind of just going over more and more and more things, designs, and yeah. So see you guys. Peace. Good luck.